Good morning and welcome. Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church on this third Sunday in the season of Advent, our Sunday of joy. The transformational journey of Ebenezer Scrooge in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol guides our Advent journey this year. It is the call to remember our past because it is what brought us here while embracing our present because if we live in it with hope and with kindness, it will build a beautiful future filled with hope, peace, joy, and love in Christ. This Sunday, we open ourselves to God's abundance and the world's needs in order to cultivate joy and generosity in this present reality. Again, welcome, a special welcome to any guests and visitors we have with us this morning. Our conviction that God has made us all unique and valuable means that we welcome you. We welcome you to bring your whole self with your own perspectives, abilities, ethnicity, gender identity, sexual orientation, and cultural background to this community where all belong and have a purpose. At Emmanuel Lutheran Church, we are a community through whom God is transforming lives by sharing our faith in God's love and grace. Blessed be God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is transformational and whose love is boundless. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore in us, O God, a generous spirit, that we might leap for joy at the coming of Christ. Amen. Beloved people of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free, free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the hope of God's realm of grace. May you be strengthened with hope in the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the joy of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. distracted by worries and tasks, open our hearts to our neighbor's needs, 
in whom our Lord Jesus Christ is revealed. Prepare our hearts and homes to welcome the baby Jesus and share the joy he gives us with others. God bless us, everyone. Awake, awake, and greet the newborn, for angels herald its dawning. Sing out your joy, for soon he is born. Behold the child of our longing. Come as a baby, weak and poor, to bring all hearts together. He opens wide the heavenly door and lives now inside us forever. Rejoice, rejoice, take heart in the night, though dark the winter and cheerless. The rising sun shall crown you with light, be strong and loving and fearless. Love be our song and love our prayer and love our endless story. May God fill every day we share and bring us at last into glory. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets that, anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your abundant life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah, Isaiah 61 in two sections verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The spirit of exalted Yahweh is upon me, for Yahweh has anointed me. God has sent me to bring good news to those who are poor, to heal broken hearts, to proclaim release to those held captive and liberation to those in prison, to announce a year in favor from Yahweh and the day of God's vindication, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to give them a wreath of flowers instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of tears, a cloak of praise instead of despair. They will be known as trees of integrity planted by Yahweh to display God's glory. They will restore the ancient ruins and rebuild sites long devastated. They will repair the ruined cities neglected for generations. For I, Yahweh, love justice. I hate robbery and sin. So I will faithfully compensate you, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Your descendants will be renowned among the nations, and your offspring among the people. All who see you will acknowledge that you are a people blessed by Yahweh. I will joyfully exult in Yahweh, who is the joy of my soul. My God clothed me with a robe of deliverance and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, the way a bridegroom puts on a turban, and a bride bedecks herself with jewels. Word of God, word of life. Thank Thanks be to God. Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol. I am the ghost of Christmas present, said the spirit. Come closer and touch my robe. Scrooge did, and as he was told, and found himself flying above the rooftops, looking down on the streets below. Everywhere there was joy and celebration. Scrooge felt like a fool. There was such happiness on Christmas, even among those who had so little. Why should he, who had so much, be so unhappy? They flew past the windows of the houses, full of people, playing games and feasting. In one, Scrooge saw a face he knew. It's my nephew, Fred, he said. Do you think we could stop here, spirit? But on they sped to the outskirts of the city, 
where the poor working people live. They came to a shabby cottage, too small for a large family sitting down at Christmas Eve dinner. But Cratchit came in and on his shoulders was Tiny Tim, the youngest of his children. He was too weak to walk without a crutch. The Cratchins had saved all year for a fine goose, which came out of the oven golden brown. Before they ate, Cratchit raised his glass. Let us drink to the health of Mr. Scrooge, to whom we owe this feast. All the children groaned, except for Tiny Tim, who lifted his cup with his frail, trembling hands and said, God bless us, everyone. Slowly, the frowns turned to laughter and the feast began. Spirit pleaded Scrooge. Is there no help for this family? Are there no prisons? said the spirit. The church bells started to chime and the ghost began to fade. If things do not change, the child will die, the spirit said. And the ghost of Christmas present vanished to nothing. Scrooge was back home and he had still had time in his life. I'm alive, he cried. I will wipe away the shadows of what have been. Church bells chimed and Scrooge threw open the window and shouted to a boy in the street, what a day it is today, what day is it, my fellow? Today, replied the boy confused. Why, it's Christmas day. Then I haven't missed it, cried Scrooge. He flung fistfuls of money to the boy. There is a turkey in the market as big as you can get. Go buy it and take it to Bob Cratchit's house. Then he threw more money to the boy who ran off like a shot. What a glorious day it was. Scrooge ran down the street wishing everyone a Merry Christmas until he got to a home he knew well. He rapped on the door. I hope they will forgive me. His nephew opened it, looking very surprised indeed. I have come for dinner, Fred, said Scrooge, if you will have me, and to add some money to your collection for the poor. Of course, said Fred, turning to his guests and shouting, it's my dear Uncle Scrooge. Scrooge and the family ate and sang and laughed, and when the music began, Old Scrooge even danced. The day after Christmas, Scrooge arrived at his office earlier than usual at a quarter past nine. The door opened quietly and Bob Cratchit snuck in. Cratchit, you're late, growled Scrooge, pretending to be angry. But Christmas is just one day a year, sir, said Cratchit. Not anymore, roared Scrooge. And then his smile broke into a laugh. Cratchit, I'm raising your salary and I'm going to help you and your family. Now go home to them. You're a good man. For a moment, Cratchit thought Scrooge had lost his mind. Merry Christmas, Bob, said Scrooge with a kindness that could not be mistaken. Scrooge was true to his word. He became a good neighbor and a good citizen and the dearest friend to Tiny Tim, who grew healthy and strong. And never again did he meet with any ghosts. He lived in the spirit of Christmas, past, present, and future every day of his life. May the same be said for all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim said, God bless us, everyone. The Holy Gospel, according to John, the first chapter. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, 
but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. This is the testimony given by John when the leaders sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained upon him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God, the Gospel of our Lord. Let us open with a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. On this third Sunday in the season of Advent, we lit the pink candle of joy on our Advent wreath. And we continue to journey through Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Today, we journey with Scrooge to view the present. The ghost of a Christmas present has come to Scrooge's house. And Scrooge has to leave his bed in the middle of the night go to the adjoining room. This is a room that is usually empty. It is cold. It is lonely. It is a room that does not know joy. And yet, in the middle of the night, when Scrooge comes in, he sees the room transformed. There is a heaping mound of the best food and the best goblets of drink. There is a fire in the fireplace, the likes of which that fireplace had never known. And this cold, lonely room is now warm and cozy and abounding with abundance. And on the top of this mound of food and drink is a giant spirit of Christmas present clothed in a soft, warm, green velvet robe with a green holly wreath around his head. This ghost of Christmas present takes Scrooge on a journey on this early Christmas morning. He goes first to the home of Scrooge's unnamed clerk, but the spirit knows his name. 
He's revealed as Bob Cratchit and his family. He and his wife are very poor. Their employer, Mr. Scrooge, does not pay very well. He doesn't even give uh, Cratchit uh, en enough coal to keep himself warm as he's working. And yet, this family with several children are celebrating with great joy over their meager but bountiful feast of goose and drink and pudding. And they have so much joy in their hearts uh, at Christmas time that they even toast a blessing to Ebenezer Scrooge himself. And Cratchit's son, Tiny Tim, in the midst of all of his health concerns, has great joy and great faith, enough that he raises his glass and says, God bless us, everyone. They continue from there and visit the homes of other people who are poor in the middle of this Christmas season. They visit the, the house of miners who are working in a very hard job. They visit sailors out to sea and separated from their families. They visit lighthouse keepers who are isolated from society. And at each of these places, there is toasting great joy at Christmas time. They are celebrating the abundance that they have. And lastly, they rest at uh, Scrooge's nephew's house, Fred and his wife, and they have gathered around them, all of their friends, and they are sharing the feast that they have. They are dancing and singing and making merry together. And they are having a wonderful time, such that at the end, when they are toasting Fred's uh, Fred does the same thing as Cratchit and toast to Scrooge. And it's, it's mentioned that Scrooge is very wealthy and his nephew says, yes, but I pity him. His wealth and abundance do him absolutely no good because he neither comforts himself with it, nor does he bring comfort to anyone else in the world with it. His wealth does him no good and he has no joy in his heart. And he says, thus I pity pity Scrooge and I ask him every year if he would come and join us and every year I pray that someday his heart will be transformed to say yes and he will experience the joy of our feast at this Christmas time. At the end of this journey with Christmas present when Scrooge's heart is filled with joy such as it hasn't felt since Fezziwig's celebration many years ago. Scrooge notices two little feet underneath the robe of Christmas present and he asks about them and so the robe opens to reveal two very meager and sick and needy children and the ghost of Christmas present tells him that these children are the results of humanity's sin and they are called ignorance and they are called want. In the midst of celebrating a night of abundance, in the midst of everyday circumstances, there is ignorance, there is want, and there is need. Scrooge is familiar with scarcity and want it causes him to grab for more and more and more wealth, and it's never enough. We, too, live in a world that would whisper lies to us about scarcity. We understand in the church want because we see it and we want to respond to it. So we see people that are living on the streets and we say, come. Rest your head at night in our shelter at the church. Let us bring you a meal of food and some warmth and some safety. We say to one another when we are lonely, come, let me uh, give you a card or call you. We see want, but still, even though we see the fulfillment of it, we, we 
often give in to the voices that cry out and whisper that there's not enough for everyone. Thus, we live in a world filled with things like inequity, where people of different races are not given equal opportunities. We live in a world where people are arguing about whether to wear masks in the middle of a pandemic, where somehow my rights trump your right to be healthy. We live in a world where people are feeling lonely and isolated when you might be experiencing a, an illness of your body or of your mental health. You might be living on top of your family and feeling too close. You might be living isolated and feeling too lonely. We experience the scarcity of the world and, we, it, and the world sometimes whispers to us that that's all there is and that that's the reality. But the spirit for Scrooge doesn't start with scarcity. He starts with abundance. He starts by revealing to, to Scrooge the joy in the world because you see, the Spirit knows what the scriptures reveal to us time and time again, that God has created this world in great abundance and poured out upon it every gift that we could possibly need and that it is human sinfulness that creates want. And it is the ignorance of knowing or caring about those most in need, uh, the ignorance that comes from those who are, who are wealthy grabbing more wealth and those who are poor having more poverty and that great vast divide that cause this inequity and cause this scarcity and it need not be so. The reality that it needs to be so is a lie. And so the Spirit reveals the joy in the midst of all this, reveals that there is great abundance in our everyday lives, that even as we isolate in our homes to keep one another safe, that is a sign of abundance that we have a home to isolate in, that we have a church to be able to provide shelter for people with, that we can provide meals, cards, prayers for one another, there is great abundance to be had. And the joy that spreads throughout us when we reveal it, when we see it, when we recognize it, is the best thing to counter the scarcity in our midst. Because it, it moves us to want to share. Today, we meet John the Baptist. Once again, uh, people are wondering, who is he? And in the Gospel of John, he is not identified necessarily as the baptizer, certainly not the baptizer of Jesus. He's identified as the witness. He says that he is not the Elijah, he is not the prophet, and he is not the Messiah. He knows who he is. He says he is simply a pointer, a testifier, a witness to the one who is to come to the one who comes to baptize us with the gift of the Holy Spirit, to the one who comes to offer forgiveness for the whole world, to the one who comes to be the Son of God in our midst. My mentor uh, used to ask me, what part of the body of Christ are you? He would say that he was the fingernail that he was there to lend support, but not absolutely necessary. I haven't figured out exactly what part of the body of, of Christ that I am. Maybe uh, you can think about what part of that body of Christ you are. I, what I love about that imagery is that we all have a role to play and that we're all an integral part of it for it to be whole. John's part is easy. John is the finger. He bears witness and he testifies. On some level, we are all called to be the witness and the testifier in a world that would lie to us that there is great scarcity. In the midst of Advent 2020, 
where we are limping along to the end of a very difficult year. In the midst of a global pandemic that has killed thousands upon thousands of people and a quarter of a million Americans alone. In the midst of uh, social unrest because we are living with the legacy and the current reality of inequity and justice and racial discrimination that we need to put right that we can no longer be ignorant about, but we must listen to the stories and put it right. In the midst of being isolated, in the midst of maybe being filled with fear and loneliness, in the midst of trying to educate your children or trying to uh, be a teacher or a essential worker or trying to be in the healthcare field, we have to be those voices that point to the joy and the abundance in our midst. So what is it that you observe? What is it that you see? What do you point to? What joy and abundance of the gift of God do you see? Because I see a lot. I see people who give their hearts and their times to set a safe place for people to sleep at night when they are experiencing homelessness. I see people coming in to serve a meal in the, mo in the safest way possible. I see people donating. I see people calling up the schools and saying, what are the needs for our families during this Christmas time to bring joy to them? I see people saying it is not enough to simply shelter people from the cold. We must advocate for affordable housing, enough for everyone, because there is enough if we just share it. I see people saying that we need uh, just policies and we need to right the wrongs of racism, that we need transformative change in our judicial, judicial system, in our court systems, in our, in our law enforcement systems, so that our people of color have the right to life and livelihood and opportunity. I see people in our churches saying that we need to change our symbolism so that all have enough. I see people saying that uh, we will write to one another. We will find safe ways to be united together this Christmas time. I see people saying that though we and our families are struggling, some of us are struggling with differences, opinions about masking and distancing, we are going to try to find a way to set our boundaries safely while maintaining relationships while letting the people know that even if this time means that we need to be somewhat distanced, we love each other and we are united in that bond. You see, beloved children of God, there is great abundance. So on this third Sunday of Advent, when we are lighting the candle of joy, what do you point to right now? How do you share the stories of God's abundance and how does that pointing grow like in Scrooge, the compassion within you to be God's hands and feet in the world and to counter ignorance and want the sins of humanity with the abundance of God in Christ that makes sure that there is enough for everyone and that causes us to share it with abandon. So beloved children of God, let us be moved with compassion by the joy revealed to us in our everyday lives. Let us remember that in the midst of our difficulties, God comes to us in the baby Jesus to bring us great abundant joy, to bring us hope and peace and love and joy such as the world has never known and has always known. We just need to be witnesses to it.
And now may the peace and joy of Christ, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the same Christ Jesus, now and always. Amen. and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of all people who reveal your light with the world through their prayers, talents, compassion, and service. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through
through their actions. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of exiles and wonders, you repair what once was destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes due to natural disasters, for disaster relief organizations working for recovery, and for all those suffering in body, mind, and spirit. We pray especially for those on our prayer list, Dee, Mike, Ralphie, Angela, Jennifer, Gloria, Ralph, Nima, Don, Jackson, Fernando, Linda, Virginia, Betty, Sandy, Casa, Lori, Corporal, Randy, Denny, Clark, and Heidi. For the family and friends of Sharon Ackerman and Von Roden, who lost their lives to COVID. And for what else do the people of God pray? For those suffering from COVID, struggling with unemployment, for those who are homeless and all have efforts to help, for those feeling isolated and families and teachers educating children online, and for our nation to come together. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all people, you close us, clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Make your church a place of refuge healing, and joy. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise and glory are yours, 
Word of God incarnate, one God, now and forever. Amen. We are bold this morning to pray that risky prayer that Christ first taught us, that prayer for God's kingdom and God's will to be done, not ours, that prayer for us to learn to give and receive forgiveness, and that prayer for all to have enough. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved children of God, we recognize that ideally we would receive Holy Communion within community and all together. But we recognize that at this time it is safer for us to commune in our homes. And we also recognize that the Holy Spirit of God unites us as one body of Christ wherever we find ourselves. So if you feel comfortable, you are welcome to set your own altar table at home and to receive communion where you are. Receiving the bread of life, this is the body of Christ given for you. Receiving the cup of grace, this is the blood of Christ given for you. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your lights appear. The evening is advancing, and darker night is near. The bridegroom is arising, and soon is drawing nigh. Up Pray and watch and wrestle, at midnight comes the cry. Our hope and expectation, O oh Jesus, now appear. Arise, O oh sun, so long for, o'er this benighted sphere. With hearts and hands uplifted, we plead, O oh Lord, to see the day of this redemption that sets your people free. Beloved children of God, receive God's blessing. May the creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. May the long expected savior fill you with love. May the unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A brief time of announcements. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for worship. A special thanks and welcome to those who are with us for the first time or just exploring this community of faith. 
please find our contact information on our website or Facebook page and reach out to us. We would love to be able to get to know you better and for you to get to know us better. A couple of things for the week. This day right after service at about 10 30 we have our online fellowship time it's a wonderful time to just connect with the community if you don't have the zoom online code please reach out to us and we will get that to you uh, also our book study on monday is at 12 30 we are reading stave three of charles dickens a christmas carol which puts us in to Christmas uh, present. So we invite you to join us for that. Uh, Bible study on Tuesday is at 6 30 in the evening. So please come and join us for that. That's also online. Again, if you don't have the code, let us know and we can get that to you. Uh, let's see. We are traveling through toward the end of Advent. We're in the, about the middle of Advent. And we're, we're reaching Christmas time. And so we are preparing for that. On the 21st, we will be having a blue Christmas service offered online. And we will have an online get together as well. So stay tuned for those times. And uh, on Christmas Eve, we will be having a service that will be posted online as well after the five o'clock hour. So please join us for that. Uh, and then there will be a Christmas morning sing-along posted for about 10 a.m. And, and we'll be at home, but we'll be able to, to shout and sing where we are at and to, to sing, most importantly, happy birthday to Jesus. Again, thank you for joining us this Advent season as we journey to the manger. It is a joy and a pleasure to be worshiping with you. And may God bless you and keep you this day and this week. Amen.